Modeling large Simulink models without the well-defined model structure can become challenging when it comes to software unit tests. Hello, my name is Nabil Koury from Paris, France, and today I would like to tell you how you can structure your Simulink models for an efficient software unit test. The ISO 26262 standard defines a software unit as an atomic level of a software component which can be subject to standalone design and testing, and the software component contains one or multiple units. In Simulink, a software component is typically implemented in one model, and the software units are modeled with subsystem blocks. But in order to work in a standalone fashion on the units, you cannot use regular subsystems because their scope is limited to the containing model. To solve this problem, you can use one of the two Simulink features, library block or reference model, to design the units into smaller models and integrate them via link mechanisms into a larger model. If you already have units modeled as subsystem, you can convert them automatically into reference models. Both features enable the instantiation of the units into one or multiple models, a single source concept for the units, a standalone access to the units for design and unit tests, the possibility to version the units individually, and an easy collaboration in a team-based development. As an example, in your project, you can have one model implementing the software units, a frame model referencing the unit for software unit test, and the frame model referencing all units to integrate them into a software component model. During testing, you can then manage the complexity of your test process by having one test project per software unit and a test project for the software components. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube to discover more videos.